All right, let's talk about Apple shares. They're down a little bit this morning after fourth quarter results. The company actually beat expectations on both the bottom and the top lines, but they did have to make a one-time payment of 13 billion euros to Ireland to settle a dispute over back taxes. iPhone sales hit a record $46.2 billion, and the higher margin services businesses is now generating about $100 billion a year. Joining us right now is one of the analysts who was on the call, Wamsi Mohan from Bank of America Securities. Uh, Wamsi, the stock's down a little bit. Most of the numbers were pretty good, but that services number, even though it's continuing to generate a huge amount of cash and growing, um, was a little below what had, had been expected. Is that what you attribute the decline in the stock price, or is it something else? Yeah, good morning, Becky. Thanks for having me. So, as you said, I think most of the metrics in the quarter were more, more or less in line. In fact, iPhone was slightly better than expected. Services was a little bit weaker, and gross margins were strong. I think the reasons the stock is indicated a little bit lower is really because of the guidance. And the guidance, um, yeah, consensus had it about 6 to 7% growth in the December quarter. Uh, what co the company guided to was a low single to mid single digit increase on a year on year basis. So the top line was definitely uh, a little bit weaker. Now, this was largely you know, signaled and understood by the buy side, just given sellout data points were a little bit weaker. And there was a slightly slower start to Apple intelligence rollout. Uh, we also think another factor here could be the fact that there is a CFO transition underway. And remember that Apple does want to set this up in a way where the incoming CEO uh, does not want to be the first one going on the call reporting disappointing numbers. So I think the bar is also intentionally being set a little bit lower uh, just to make sure that the CFO transition also is a smooth transition. All right. Uh, overall, though, the, the number for Apple iPhones, the, I16, the iPhone 16, those were stronger sales than had been anticipated. And that's kind of the opposite of what the analyst community had been expecting up to this point. Uh, well, Becky, look, I mean, the September quarter is not a great tell, right? You, you've only got about a week of sales uh, in the September quarter. So the iPhone upside was largely driven by the fact that the 15 cycle was still ending on a reasonably positive note, like 6% growth in iPhone sales, largely driven by, uh, call it, low single-digit growth in uh, units and low single-digit growth in ASPs. Uh, the 16 cycle should be better. We do expect the 16 cycle to be up on a year-on-year -year basis. If you just do the math around the sequentials and what that implies for hardware, uh, it does imply hardware flat to up. And generally, that really is not possible without iPhone growth. So iPhone is continuing to grow. It's the rate and pace that's, that's a little bit under question. We would just remind people that this is a slightly a different cycle from every cycle we've seen, right? There are continual software updates, which basically means that the cadence of the rollout is going to dictate which regions upgrade first, which regions upgrade later. And within that context, we also think that the mix shift to the pro remains very, very strong, despite the fact that Apple intelligence runs across the board. So uh, we do think that it sets up for a reasonably good cycle, but we're really positive on the fact that this can be a multi-year cycle, given that as this rollout happens across different regions, uh, you, you do get sort of this propensity to upgrade from a very large install base of iPhones uh, to the newer phones that are capable of running Apple intelligence. And when it gets to the services business, a little weaker than it had been anticipated, is that a concern for you or no? Yeah, look, we, we did take our services numbers down marginally. If we look at our full year uh, estimate changes, our revenues went down about $5 billion, from $428 billion to $423 billion. So in the context of Apple, $5 billion is really not that massive a number. It's $0.04 cents on EPS on a, call it like seven fifty. dollars um, base, right? So again, like numbers didn't move a lot. And the reason for that is although revenues went down, the gross margins were very strong. The guided gross margins were extremely strong. For the first time in Apple's history, they've got a 47 number in their gross margin guidance uh, at the high end of that range, which is just incredible. And this has been part of our thesis that gross margins are actually going from 45 to 50 percent. In the last decade, we've seen them expand uh, from 35 to 45. We think in the next decade, we're seeing this expansion run up to 50, and frankly, it's actually outperforming even our expectations of how fast that's moving. So we really like the setup over here. We think the marginal number changes are insignificant. The thesis really remains unchanged. Do you have a price target for the stock? Yeah, we have 256 for the for the stock.